Well, it's official. The United States has lifted its ban on the transfer of American weapons to the neo-Nazi Azov Battalion in Ukraine. Today, Azov is led by Denis Prokopenko, a recipient of the Hero of Ukraine Award from interim Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, a figure he once refused to salute. Prior to becoming its commander, Prokopenko was featured on the front cover of Azov's magazine called Black Sun after the Nazi Sonin red symbol. Prokopenko is a longtime member of Azov, but before he joined the group, he was a member of the Ukrainian soccer ultra gang called the White Boys Club. According to a friend and former Azov member, before joining the Nazi brigade, the two had traveled almost the entirety of Ukraine to support their team. Here's the White Boys Club celebrating Prokopenko's award. I went to the White Boys Club's YouTube channel to see what they're all about. 100% white reads their banner from this 2017 video. Well, I guess that answers that. Before Prokopenko took command, Azov was led and founded by Andrei Beletsky, a longtime neo-Nazi activist. Today, Beletsky leads an Azov detachment called the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade. Beletsky is perhaps best known for his infamous quote, wherein he pledges to lead the white races of the world in the final crusade against the Semite-led Untermenschen. But you don't have to look very far to find just as equally disturbing remarks. Beletsky was a key figure in the neo-Nazi Patriot of Ukraine group. During one meeting, he raved, How can we describe our enemies, the authorities and the oligarchs? Do they have anything in common? Yes, they have one thing in common. They are Jews, or behind them, their real masters, Jews. While in prison for allegedly ordering a murder, Beletsky's writings were published in an essay collection entitled The Word of the White Leader. I quote, Ukraine is the light of Europe. Our nation still has enough strength to withstand this influx of foreigners, to cleanse our land, and to light the fire of purification throughout Europe. Ukrainian social nationalism considers the Ukrainian nation to be a blood racial community. Race is everything for nation building. Race is the basis on which the superstructure grows in the form of national culture, which again comes from the racial nature of the people and not from language, religion, economy, etc. On Telegram, Azov celebrated the U.S. lifting the ban against them using American weapons. Receiving weapons and training from the U.S. will not only increase the combat capabilities of Azov, but most importantly, will contribute to the preservation of lives and health of the personnel of the brigade. This is a new page in the history of our unit. Azov is becoming even more powerful, even more professional, and even more dangerous for the occupiers. The policy change is a far cry from less than five years ago, when 40 members of the House of Representatives urged the State Department to classify the group as a terrorist organization. Since 2018, Azov has been banned from receiving training and assistance from the United States because of its neo-Nazi ideology. But as a main force fighting Russia, today, the State Department sees no problem. In a statement, the U.S. State Department declared that Azov had passed Leahy vetting, which is used by the United States to prevent groups that have carried out war crimes from receiving weapons and training. Yet evidence is not so hard to find. During the showdown in Mariupol between Russian forces and the Azov Battalion, Videos purporting to show Azov executing fleeing civilians and using civilian infrastructure for covers were not hard to come by. These are war crimes according to the Geneva Convention. While Ukraine and NATO have blamed Russia for bombing a theater in Mariupol that was holding civilians at the time, Russia has accused Azov of staging a false flag. Azov soldiers were in and around the building in the days leading up to the bombing. In fact, the Azov battalion was publishing footage from inside the building just days prior. Following Russia's takeover of the city, civilians testified to Russian media in droves about the Azov Battalion's use of civilians as human shields. Meanwhile, a number of captured Azov fighters have been found guilty of war crimes in Russian courts. Over the years, everybody from the United Nations to the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe have documented war crimes by Azov. Yet, despite the previous ban, Azov has already been armed and trained by the United States. It's documented. Let me show you. One article from 2019 in the Daily Beast begins, There are no doubts about the neo-Nazi and white supremacist backgrounds of the Azov Battalion, a militia that has positioned itself at the forefront of the fight against Russian-backed separatists in eastern Ukraine. In an interview with the outlet, Sergeant Ivan Kharkiv of the Azov Battalion talks about his battalion's experience with U.S. trainers and U.S. volunteers quite fondly, even mentioning U.S. volunteers and engineers and medics that are currently assisting them. A similar interview was published in the American-funded propaganda outlet Radio Svoboda in 2018. It's with none other than Azov Commander Denis Prokopenko, identified by his callsign Radis. Radis tells about the history of the appearance of all Azov officers. Four instructors from the United States and Canada taught. Two of them are veterans of the war in Vietnam. They were 74 and 66 years old. 
They fought in Vietnam as ordinary soldiers. They then held command and staff positions in NATO structures in Iraq, Afghanistan. Of course, in the USA, it's designed for one year. Here it was shortened to two and a half months. The entire team of Azov, 44 people, were gathered here. There was a lot of material in English that they did not have time to translate. There were Russian, Ukrainian, Georgian languages. But they managed, especially since in Azov there are many officers with fluent English, there was a military translator. Only two officers failed the exams and left the course. Then, after finishing the course, with new knowledge, we went to the training ground for combat adjustment. Then the war in the format wall-to-wall -wall and crowd-to-crowd -crowd ended, and we understood that we urgently need to turn non-military people into military ones. And then we chose NATO standards, from symbols, map design, personnel structures of units, to tactical structures and techniques, and we got a serious head start. If you know, the armed forces and the National Guard have just now decided that it's necessary to switch to the NATO system. Meanwhile, photographs published by Azov in 2017 show its members meeting with American military instructors. That same year, Azov published more photos of its members using American-made grenade launchers. Here I'd caution against the potential for blowback. Arming and training a neo-Nazi group in Ukraine could have serious repercussions for the West. The only thing, though, is, is that it already has. Let's rewind to November 2022, when Italian police busted a neo-Nazi cell which included members of Azov. Members of the group reportedly maintained quote, direct and frequent contacts over Telegram with not just the Azov Battalion, but also of the neo-Nazi Ukrainian military formation's right sector and Centuria, quote, probably in the view of possible recruitment into the ranks of these fighting groups, according to Italian media. One of the arrested members, Giampiero Testa, was reportedly, quote, dangerously close to far-right Ukrainian nationalist groups and was planning an attack on a police station. Italian police were unable to capture another member of the cell as he was in Ukraine fighting with the Azov Battalion. Authorities say the fighter, Anton Radomsky, planned to attack a shopping mall in Naples. Earlier that year, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security noted in an internal document that, quote, Ukrainian national groups, including the Azov movement, are actively recruiting racially or ethnically motivated violent extremist white supremacists to join various neo-Nazi volunteer battalions in the war against Russia. That same document notes one key American intelligence gap, asking, what kind of training are foreign fighters receiving in Ukraine that they could possibly proliferate in U.S.-based militia and white nationalist groups? If we rewind even further, we can find even more direct links between the Azov Battalion and American neo-Nazi groups that have carried out violent attacks on anti-racist protesters on American soil. For example, members of the neo-Nazi Rise Above movement, or RAM, were arrested for carrying out unprovoked attacks on journalists and protesters in the United States, ranging from California to Charlottesville, Virginia, during the infamous Unite the Right rally in 2017. In 2018, they traveled to Germany, Ukraine, and Italy to celebrate Adolf Hitler's birthday, according to the criminal complaint against them. According to FBI Special Agent Scott Beersworth, the RAM members met with Olena Semenyaka, the leader of the International Department for the National Corps, which is a political party in Ukraine that was founded in 2016 out of a regiment of the Ukrainian military called the Azov Battalion. Based on my experience and training, I know that the Azov Battalion is a paramilitary unit of the Ukrainian National Guard, which is known for its association with neo-Nazi ideology and the use of Nazi symbolism, and which is believed to have participated in training and radicalizing United States-based white supremacy organizations. In an interview with the U.S. government's Radio Free Europe, Semenyenka said that the RAM members, quote, came to learn our ways and, quote, showed an interest in learning how to create youth forces in the ways Azov has. The Rise Above movement's founder, Rob Rundo, was arrested in Romania last year. You can see the Nazi Sonnenrad tattoo on his elbow. During the trip to Ukraine, Rundo boxed with an Azov fighter in a highly publicized event. Rundo has said that his idea for RAM came from Ukraine's far-right scene. This was always my whole inspiration for everything, he told a right-wing podcast in September 2017, referring to Azov as, quote, the future. They really have the culture out there, he said. They have their own clubs, they have their own bars, they have their own dress style. Back then, Azov compounds, quote, could be described as a small state within a state, Olena Semenyaka, then the head of the international outreach for the Azov movement, told Time magazine. She told the outlet that Azov's mission was to form a coalition of far-right groups across the Western world, with the ultimate aim of taking power throughout Europe. One such group was the Autumn Division, whose founder, Brandon Russell, plotted to attack Baltimore's electrical grid to freeze out black people during the wintertime. 
Other members of the group have well-documented ties to Azov and have been arrested for crimes including murder and distributing bomb-making materials. Another Azov veteran turned National Corps political figure, Vladislav Sobolyevsky, expressed his desire for Ukraine to become a nuclear-armed state in a deleted interview. I want Ukraine to have nuclear weapons. This is the shield and the sword that will allow our state to develop in any version of the foreign policy situation. To conclude, the United States will begin, or already has begun, arming and training a neo-Nazi group that has explicit aims to take over Europe. Are you okay with your tax dollars going towards weapons for a group that aims to establish a Fourth Reich? Let us know in the comments. Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.